I'm CK. Tonight we've got another radio kit. This is an Autoscan FM radio kit from Elenco, E-L-E-N-C-O. Uh, I have a hit and miss relationship with Elenco. Some of the stuff that I've built of theirs, like this digital multimeter, is really, really good. Uh, I, the kit was great. The product itself you end up with is really good. But then there are some things like their uh, capacitance substitution box, which is, let's just say it's not useful in the end. So we'll see how this one goes. I'm uh, upbeat and looking positively towards it. Hope you enjoy it. So soldering iron's heating up, and here's the kit. Let me open it up. First, we have a nice manual. Uh, Alenco usually makes good manuals. They're very, they're focused on teaching and teaching well along the way. A nice parts list, right to lead everything off. Parts identification table, which is good. So if you're unfamiliar with uh, components, you can get a good picture of them. And then what you need to assemble resistor values, capacitor values, and here's the actual description and a block diagram of how uh, the radio works. Circuit description, tuning, some sub schematics, and then the construction bits. So the manual is really good. Uh, I would recommend this to any uh, young builder. So let's look at the actual package and see what the parts look like. Ah, yes. Elen Elenco has a certain style to things, to their kits. So first, figure out where this is closed up. It's heat sealed on the top. So one thing they do is this, and let me take this out of the plastic because I think it's got a little bit of glare on it. They'll put many of the electronic components on a, this uh, white strip of light cardboard, so the resistors with their values and their color codes, diodes and how they in are installed, the disk capacitors, the uh, electrolytic capacitors. This is really nice. I, I, I commend them for this. Uh, from a practical standpoint, I get a little, the wire's bent the wrong way for me personally, but that's just personal preference and that's just a huge nitpick. But this is really good for anyone who's learning electronics. And of course, as many kits do, they give you a little roll of solder that is, oh no, it went in the garbage. An FM antenna. Circuit board, we'll look at that in a second. I see a couple of coils and an LED. Uh, they've got the IC in some spongy material to protect the legs. I would have liked them to do something with the coils to protect them a little better. Uh, fortunately, I saw them before squishing the bag or something, but coils can be 
a little fragile. And here we've got some mechanical components, potentiometer, probably for volume, uh, a, a knob to go on top of that, a couple of push buttons, and caps, a yellow and red cap for the push buttons. So that's good. In here we've got some teeny tiny screws. Teeny tiny screws, always good. Uh, battery holder for 9 volt battery. And the most important part, speaker, a little 8 ohm, 0.5 watt speaker. That's actually a nice speaker for this kind of kit. This, no, this feels really good. This is a good, looks like it's a good beefy magnet too. Oh, that's a high quality, that's a high quality speaker. Look at that magnet. So I can't, I mean, uh, I'll commend them on the parts. The parts look really good. Now let's look at the board. Alenco Autoscan FM radio model FM uh, 88K, copyright 2010. So it's relatively uh, current. Now this is also really good. If you look at the uh, circuit board here, not only are things marked as R1, C19 or so on, they have uh, the appropriate uh, schematic diagram, ideograms on them, uh, symbols I guess most humans would say, uh, symbols on them so as you're assembling it, it says put the two diodes here, you see exactly how uh, they're laid out and the symbol they're going to use for future reference. So that's all really good. Uh, yeah, I will ding them on one thing. For the electrolytics caps, they've got the positive indicated, but for the two diodes, uh, they just have the cathode and the anode uh, and they don't indicate which side is the stripe side. Again, you should know that, but this is to help reinforce that information to young people building stuff. So I still would have put the uh, band line there. Now we'll look at the back and there's the bag is stuck to tape. Uh, very simple circuit board. Oh, it's got a surface mount component already installed. I did not know that. Huh. So it's got a surface mount controller in there. It is a, uh, we'll look up the part number. Let me see if I can see it. It's a CD9088CB. That's Charlie Delta 9088 Charlie Baker. Uh, I'll take a look. I'll look that up and see what it is. But traces are nice and big. The solder pads are very big. Uh, I don't know how they're ad they're going to adhere. Uh, how solder is going to adhere to them? And just because when I'm not sure, I like to be sure. So I will do what I do in these cases and put some. Uh, acetone on a paper towel and give the board a quick quick rub over. Uh, as I always say when I do this, I do not recommend doing this to anyone else. Uh, acetone is can be nasty and if it's inhaled or get on your skin or so on, some people can react. Uh, so I don't recommend it to anybody else. I do it because I've been exposed to so much chemical crap throughout my life when I was in the airplane business that a little bit of acetone is almost like some hand lotion to me. Okay, I'm gonna set up the circuit board mount 
and I will dive in step by step as the manual says. So I looked up that controller uh, chip that's uh, surface mounted on the back and it is an electronic tuning FM radio IC. So this is where all the tuning activity, all the hard parts of tuning the FM signal uh, come from in this kit. I was wondering why there weren't all that many uh, parts, but one big old IC does a lot of work. Okay, assemble components to the PC board. And in their instruction guide, I don't know if this is focusing. Uh, one, of, one of the cameras will be focusing on it. So again, uh, Alenco generally does this very well. Here's the list of things to install with boxes to put check marks in and then a pointer to the location on the board and what they also do is for each component type that you're going to be installing in this step, they have a picture of uh, how the component would typically be installed. So this is looking like uh, one of their high quality kits and something I would definitely recommend for a uh, junior or beginning builder. Yes, I'm going to complain about PC board holding stands again, like I always do. Okay, we're going to start. We're just going to go down the instruction list, start with the uh, diodes, then do all the resistors. Uh, actually, we're not doing all the resistors in this case. They usually do that. I'm going to go, because we're doing it by the book, I'm going to go step by step on the instructions. See, this is what I mean about the bends. It's bent this way to go through the cardboard, so I've got to unbend it and then rebend to uh, have it bent to go through the holes correctly. And then there's a kink in the leads then. I mean, that's a kink that's going to be cut off. It just makes it a little more notchy when you're putting it through the board. That is a huge nitpick. I'm aware that I'm nitpicking there, but uh, I get to nitpick. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Well, you probably can. Uh, the capacitors are all flattened over their numbers, which is a little irritating. And they're also not in numerical order, which is also irritating. So C2 is next, and obviously it's an electrolytic. But I can't see the numbers underneath. There it is. Uh, why they didn't do these in numeric order? Because they, they didn't put them in value order, which would have been the other way to do it. So I don't know why they chose to do that. Just makes it a little bit more of a pain to see what you're doing. And this is a case where my tweezers don't work to get to the socket because the socket's too deep on the board. So I just hold it in place using a little blue tape before I solder it.
Now the volume control. And this comes in from the back of the board. Like so. You want to make sure the tab on the inside of it is either cut off or flattened down. I may just flatten it down. Much better. Uh, and this is a switched. It's got a detent for a switch, as you can see. It's on the back, so if your explorer who's building this wants to look at it, he or she can see how, as it clicks away, contact is actually made. As it clicks back in, it's broken. <clears throat> uh, it's a 200, or it's a 50k pot. Uh, I assume it's audio taper, but I could be wrong about that. I'm not going to guarantee anything. Uh, so we drop it in from this side, and we're of course going to solder on this side because that's where the pads are. I'm going to get a thicker piece of solder. And that all looks good. as perpendicular as I'm going to get it. Washer. Nut. Grab my little EMP panel nut wrench, which actually won't work here because the pins came through the board. Normally that's a great tool for panel nuts. When I build a guitar amp on camera, uh, I'll show you how that works and why they're great tools to have in your toolbox. And I even remember where I got them. Uh, I got them from Musician's Friend, so I can recommend them. Okay. And we're even going to put the knob on now. And the knob has a notch, so where do we want the notch to point? I think I'll point it, I'll put it about 7 o'clock. Let's say that. There we go. So that's page one. And now they want to put the battery box on. And we're going to put the battery box on the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the battery leads and lay them down. So they should be about a 90 degree angle. Uh, I'm going to leave them bent down a little bit more because the goal is to have them press against these pads. 
so having a little spring tension on them will not be bad. Uh, it does come with uh, the battery holder has three screw holes, but we're only going to use one, which is a kind of funny design decision, but it's their design. I'm not going to quibble about that one. I'm looking to see what, where these other screws go. Oh, the other screws are for attaching the antenna later. So one long screw. And it's associated not. And we'll line up the battery terminals and screw that down. And we're never going to rely on simply contact, so we'll solder these in place too. These are pretty big, so give it a little bit of time to heat up. And there we go. So the battery box is in. Now the next thing is the speaker. So the speaker goes here and the speaker connectors, connections on the board are here and here. So we'll want to ensure where the speaker go. Want to ensure we get It aligned about like so, so it aims in the right direction so we can go straight from the terminal to the terminal. Now, uh, the instructions say mount this and then wire it, but I'm actually going to put the two wires on the speaker before I mount it to the board. Okay, now the next thing is we have a little bit of adhesive ring. First we'll mount it to the speaker itself. take the board out of the jig for a minute so I can do this. Let's take a look. I'm just going to go... I want to see how it sizes out. Hmm. Kind of hangs over a little bit. When you've got the voice coil centered, the uh, pad kind of Adhesive pad kind of hangs over the edge a little bit. I'll probably trim that up. So I want to see that. That's the picture I want to see. Okay. Peel that adhesive protector off and go exactly the way we want with the voice coil centered. All dandy. And again, I'll trim that with a razor blade or X-Acto knife when I'm done. Again, if you're coaching, 
a youngster that may be uh, a frustrating bit because they'll want to get it just right and they might not get it just right. So let them know, you know, if it's if it ends up working in the end and it's your first one, don't worry about it not being quite perfect. Now let's do a little wire bending to get speaker wires on their pads. It's a good chance to talk to your young builder about uh, phasing on speakers uh, to make sure they've got the negative and the positive correct because uh, it doesn't someone learning may not think that a speaker is going to be polarity sensitive so give them a little uh, talk about how the speaker cone moves and all that uh, so they know that it does make a difference it's in a in something like this in a little I am uh, in a little single speaker FM radio it's not critical but if you get into something more complex obviously it is speaker and battery box are now installed they want you to power it up to make sure you've got the uh, power circle and make sure that the uh, you're getting at least a click out of the speaker when you ground the uh, pins on the volume control. However, I'm a little uh, nonplussed because they show a capacitor on the back of the circuit board and I did not see that anywhere. Ah, I see. So what they're saying is They've given you some extra components, so later on as you're bringing this up and if the sound's not clear, you can add an additional capacitor uh, on the back of the board. Uh, so we'll see if we need that. But right now, we're going to do initial power up. Let me turn the, make sure it's clicked off. Check the voltage on the battery I have on my bench by touching it to the tip of my tongue, which is the way any serious electronics technician checks 9-volt batteries. Now we'll bring that up, and do we get LED? We have an LED. LED is lit. Let me turn the pot all the way up. See if we can get a click by grounding it. Oh yeah, here. So it's clicking, so we're good. Actually, I don't know which end of the mic has the mic. So it's clicking, so we've succeeded so far. Phase one accomplished. So that's testing section one. Now we've got a bunch of components to solder onto the board. And as I look through it, nothing too interesting there. So uh, I'm going to speed through that without any commentary. Okay, so that is all the soldering necessary for the board. All the electronic components are installed. There are two 
left uh, a disc and an electrolytic that go uh, here and they bridge two pins on the microcontroller they're used uh, in case the radio doesn't work quite the way you expect so we'll see we may have to bridge them in there uh, not sure now let's get the antenna the antenna mounts right there with these itty bitty screws All right, that's the build. Okay, so we're gonna take our nine volt battery and I'm actually, well, no, this one's fine. Take the nine volt battery and plug her in. This battery box is a little bit annoying, but I'm not gonna complain too much. Extend the antenna fully. Oops. Bang into the camera, of course, when I'm doing that. Now, power on. And we got background noise. Press and release the reset button. And now hit scan. Bass player originally from the San Francisco area, these days living in Chicago. And a band camp release of his called Voices from the Empty Moor. Well, that went Songs very of well. Anne Briggs. Uh, dealing with some more traditional uh, English slash Irish type music. but um, So it, initially, it immediately picked up the station. Remarkable work there from Devon. Now let me scan. Recorded, uh, hated most about death was that it would be the only aspect of his life he would not be able to write about. Let me take it out of the fixture. The battery box works kind of as a you know, his illness stand the for us. Let me turn so, it down a little bit. So it's a very good, quick, easy build, uh, but great for a beginner. I, I would highly recommend this. And as you can hear, that it, it sort of jumps in. You think, oh, I have to record. It picked it right up. And it's a fine little radio. So good. That was a very good build and a fine little radio to uh, mess around with. Again, uh, I recommend this kit. Hope you enjoyed the video.